flowers and stuffed teddy bears, little comfort to a neighborhood shattered by gunfire. Again, this makeshift memorial just yards away from another memorial just down the street. The people here hoping they don't have to build another. The scene, of course, a lot less hectic now. There is still some crime tape here and a lone deputy vehicle outside. We watch firefighters blast this now charred home with water. The smoke so thick. You can feel it. If you take a look behind me here, you can see the investigation is still active. You can see where crews had to clear away snow and dirt to get to that water main rupture and take a look at what the break left behind. This is incredible. I am walking at an area where people can usually enjoy the Illinois River here in Havana on dry land, but look at the water level. You know, tours here at the Lincoln Home finished up about a half an hour ago. We are now less than 24 hours away from when fans are going to pack those stands. We have an assembly line of emergency sandbaggers here in Naples. Neighbors who just last week were too frightened to speak now have a lot to say. Yes. We're calling on the east side. Yes. We're calling on the west side. Yes. We're calling on the south side. Yes. We're calling on the north side to come together and take a stand. Yes. Of course, there's one voice that can't join in on their pleas to stop the violence. As soon as I heard screaming, that's how I know some bad tragedy hap happened. 15 year old Janisha Cummings. She, uh, we're, was really trying to get out of the area, trying to go to the store, cross the street or whatever, and um, a straight bullet hit her. That's when, I mean, I ran, everybody, the whole neighborhood came. The cheerleader, basketball player, follower of God, lay lifeless in the streets. Our Father, Our Father. which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come. Decatur police arrested a 15-year-old boy for her murder, this group praying for him as well. Somebody needs to be bold enough to step out and say, you're my brother. And that's somewhere there's help. Ceasefire closed up. Ceasefire closed. They closed all the after school programs. There is nothing for these young people to do. Except hold hands and pray for a better tomorrow. We just want to celebrate, you know what I'm saying, the fact that God has her now. She's in a better place. And um, Jamisha, we love you. We, we're going to miss you forever. I really, I'm really going to miss her. You'll miss her. Liz, this is a civil lawsuit filed by the mother of one of the alleged victims. It details what allegedly happened between Jennifer Tyree and her 17-year-old student. It also claims the two involved were not the only ones that knew about what was going down. We were very disturbed by the fact that this particular teacher was allowed to proceed as a high school teacher and not qualified. The first of many reasons attorney Timothy Shea says taking on this case was a no brainer. This lawsuit says former Lanphier High School teacher Jennifer Tyree carried on a sexual relationship with a 17 year old student who has a learning disability. The lawsuit says Tyree told the alleged victim's mother her son was failing, but she could help if she let Tyree engage her son in a mentoring program sponsored by Lanphier and District 186. The suit says the mentoring program was actually trips to the movies, kickboxing lessons, a weekend away from home, paid for by Tyree, plus kissing touching, nudity, and sex. We have requested the court to allow us to proceed under a Jane Doe and John Doe heading so that his identity not be revealed to subject him to any further embarrassment or humiliation. The lawsuit is against both Tyree and District 186, and it seeks at least $50,000. District 186 officials refuse to speak on camera because of the ongoing litigation. And while school board member Scott McFarland would also not talk about the case, he did say the district is working to keep open and honest. The new school board was put in place here a few months ago, and we've done quite a bit to ensure that the public is made aware of what we're doing. And the public may need that reassurance, especially after hearing that, according to the lawsuit, at least two District 186 employees knew about what was going on. But Jennifer Tyree kept on teaching. Now, Shea says, someone may have to pay a price. Shea says it also could be at least a year before the civil case makes it to court. That's because Tyree is also facing criminal charges in relation to this case, and those will have to be dealt with before a civil trial can proceed. Live in Springfield, Kimberly Howard, ABC News Channel 20. <laughs> If ever there was a time when a town needed football, 
It's now. It's been very surreal. One week after a massive twister carved a path through Washington, Illinois, togetherness. Yes! Pride. Washington! Washington! Cheers. Definitely gave us something to look forward to. So at the end of the week, we all knew that we could get away for maybe one day and just come here and cheer on the team. The Panthers clawed their way to a 12-0 record just one day before many of them lost their homes. People have been sending us pictures like from other schools, like all wearing orange on Friday. On game day, it's all orange too. The stands packed, the fans ready, the Cyclones no longer something to fear. We're really appreciative of everyone that's come and help. Sacred Heart Griffin carted truckloads of food and water to the devastated town. They raised more than $50,000 to help them rebuild. They even fed the team on game day and bust in their opponent's fans. So it's football on the field, elation on the sidelines. Definitely a nice escape, and it's definitely well needed. As the players go head to head for a shot at the state finals, somehow the score doesn't matter because being united like this is victorious. I mean, we're all proud of them, and then, I mean, win or lose, they've been through a lot, so. In Springfield, Kimberly Howard, ABC News Channel 20.